Carl Edwards on his way to get a uh, sweet onion chicken teriyaki sub. I think Jeff Gordon's blowing up. Or no, I tell you what happened. He's, he's, got, he's, got, a, he's got a tire rub. He's got a tire hey, rub. See that left front ain't gonna take it too much longer. I saw smoke fly out of it. He made contact up here in three and four with somebody. I thought it was because he was slowing down, but I guess he just got run into. And you can see it just, oh, just right that, there that, about yeah. 11 o'clock. Right where that nose is, uh, that carbon yeah. fiber stuff. That'll cut that tire right down. He's and at the top back. of the wheel well, that fender's all shoved in. Yeah, it He's is. made hard contact with someone. He, He's fallen back to the 18th position, about 10 seconds behind the leader, Kurt Busch. Turn two. And it is the 44 of A.J. Allmendinger. What's one man's misfortune is another man's fortune. That was Jeff Gordon's fortune right there because he needed that caution. Allmendinger, whose option was picked up this week by Richard Petty Motorsports through 2010, has had a strong start to this season, but around and into the fence he goes. Now I'm pretty sure since it's only been about nine laps, we may see some teams actually stay out, but I think we'll see a lot of teams that they do come to pit road, that they'll come to pit road and get just those two right side tires. We know he's going to come get four plus repair the fender. This is looking from the back of Dale Jr.'s car. Side, say hi, come on, he's better now behind you. You know, it looks like he drove down in there under Dale Jr. and saw he was going to get into him and locked it up and spun it out. I think that may be what happened to the 44 of Amendinger. We're pretty sure that uh, Truex and Rudiman will come in. They only got two tires on that last pit stop. Yeah, they made their bid. I think they'll lay in a while. Okay, we're pretty sure they're going to stay out. <laughs> and here comes the 48 car, Jimmy Johnson. And then pretty much everyone at the back of the pack as far as lead lap cars, especially Jeff Gordon, you see him hit pit road. See, I like this right here because now I'm out of sync with the leaders. Okay. So next time I'll stay out. Matt. Going to be a four tire change for Jimmy Johnson hit road in the 11th position since most of the cars in front of him did not pit. They came in to get the fresh tires. Well, Jeff Gordon is in the pit. They had to come in. Jeff wanted to stay out on the racetrack, but crew chief Steve Letarte overruled and said no, he had to come in. So they're going to fix that fender, get rid of the smoke problem that they had, and remove the possibility of a tire going down. They are now pulling at the left front fender banging on it with a hammer, trying to get it squared away, and Gordon will start at the back of the pack. But it's going to be interesting to watch this 24 and his 48 car because we've seen cars that get at the back of the pack, and All we've right, still go. got 32 cars on the lead lap get back there and just get trapped. You seem like you can't go anywhere. Well, we've seen that with the 24 a lot over the last couple of years. Looked like they had that kind of corrected this year, but we'll see. And add to those lead lap cars, Kevin Harvick who gets the free pass on this, the fourth caution of the night. Earlier today, Jeff Hammond filed this State Farm Safety Report. In an effort to prevent fires, NASCAR requires all the teams to run a fuel cell located in the rear of the car. And it also has to be up to NASCAR standards as far as installation is concerned. The bladder itself, well, it's an aerospace technology rubber bladder and it goes inside the steel container. Now, the, st the bladder itself has to be SFI industry approved. That means that it has to go through certain testing to be able to be used in a NASCAR race. Cool thing about it is they also have an expiration date, five years old. That's all they can use as far as inside the fuel cell itself. NASCAR doesn't fill these things up to make sure they hold 18 gallons. What they do, they use a dimension to let the guys and the teams know what size this thing can be. It's 33 by 17 by 8. All of this is done in an effort to keep not only competition fair, but safe. Thanks, Jeff. Well, Mark Martin won the daylight segment of this race. Kurt Busch won the twilight segment of our triple header. And now the nighttime, as Daryl said earlier, is going to be the right time. And not soon enough for the Hendrick team, because look what happened to Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson and some of the cars they were in close proximity with like Denny Hamlin. This is where uh, Jeff gets his fender knocked in I think. No that was actually contacting the left rear. It's the left front fender they pulled this time and that was just another 
of the donuts and wheel marks you get here at Phoenix. This place just races a whole lot more like a short track than it does a super speedway. Yeah, it does until something goes wrong. And then you say, man, I must have been doing a lot. I must have been going faster than I thought I was. Right. So you enter these corners at about 160 miles an hour. But we've got Jimmy Johnson that's going to restart 25th. Jeff Gordon restart 31st. And we're Our almost halfway through green. this race. Green flag. Elliott Sadler in that 19 car fighting to try to get back on the lead lap. I think you'll see Kurt, per Kurt Busch just really drive it down into turn three and four and he'll get by Elliott. Well, Larry, I was a little bit worried about, uh, not worried, I shouldn't say that. I've seen development of a new engine sometimes be, probably have more problems on tracks like this where you gotta have so much grunt up off the corner right now where the two car is. Sometimes an engine, a new one, will have a lot of horsepower, but all on the top end. It looks like this Dodge engine they got in this car now has got top end and bottom end. And it seems like the Penske cars are the only ones racing the new Dodge engine. They're capitalizing on it. Craig Biffle moves up to sixth as we cross through halfway. And we now have the incident that put the left front on Jeff Gordon's car askew. And it was, again, contact with Denny Hamlin. That's pretty significant. Right there. They, they really are starting to lean on each other real hard. That's going into turn three. And you can see what it did to Jeff's left front fender. But there where it happened was, see the, what? was the kink in the back straightaway. Well, and then you saw that Jeff Gordon didn't help any by bamming into him again. Denny Hamlin right now running in the 11th position. In fact, he just got passed by Jeff Burton, or he's got a battle with Jeff Burton in the 31 for 11. Greg Biffle moves past uh, Martin Truex. That's fifth place for Biffle. Steve? Mike, on the previous pit stop, Martin Truex Jr. and Kevin Bono, Manny the crew chief, had a funny exchange. Bono said, are you thinking said whatever and Bono said good we need track position they took two. and they almost could not come back to pit road after only running a right. few laps because they had already kind of made their bed now you've got to lay in it you're right it was so few laps uh, under green since that stop here's 10th place on back Jeff Burton Ryan Newman Denny Hamlin Carl Edwards Casey Kane Krista, how about Newman and that radio problem that he's had? Yeah, Mike, they haven't had radio communication since lap 37. Ryan cannot talk, but he can hear. So what he's doing is giving hand signals. If his car is tight, he's touching the roof. If it's loose, he's touching the door. Tony Gibson asked if the changes they made on the last stop helped. He said, touch the door if they helped. Ryan went by, patting the door like crazy to tell Tony Gibson, yes, yes, it worked. Dick. Denny Hamlin, car number 11, just dropped down to the 13th spot, has told his crew he may have a left front tire going down. <laughs> I don't, I'm not surprised if he's uh, been using the sidewalls of them pretty good. Wait a minute, but now, Darrell, the contact he had with Jeff Gordon was with Hamlin's right front. Exactly. So this could be interesting. Yeah. Well, he might be confused. <laughs> Whoa, he and Jimmy Johnson almost get together. And you can see the right side of the car. That right front tire is really scuffed up. So he might think yeah. it's a left, but it's uh, most likely the right if he's having a problem. Well, I'm going to tell you what, that 48 car is taking no prisoners with these four fresh tires. Remember, he started back in the 25th position, and after just eight laps, he's already just about to crack the top 10. He's in 13th. Now, this just happened from Jimmy Johnson's view. Jimmy's down on the apron, just touches the back of the 11 car of Hamlin and moves him over a little bit. Outside. You know the common denominator? Denny Hamlin. <laughs> <laughs> or Hendrick Motorsports. <laughs> Kurt Busch leads full sitter Mark Martin by one second in the Subway Fresh Fit 500. <laughs> watching NASCAR on Fox.